Yes, yeah, so Rene Hernandez, 25-year-old young man uh, who was a college soccer player. He had a you know, girlfriend that he had a ch child with, a young son. She was uh, about nine months pregnant at the time of this accident. And he was coming from his parents' house and going to back to his girlfriend's house where he was living. Uh, had taken some time off from college and he was just going home on a you know, late uh, Sunday night, early Monday morning at 2 a.m. And basically he was traveling on the 605 freeway. And of course, uh, he doesn't remember exactly what happened because he suffered a significant brain injury, but at least according to the police reports that we obtained, uh, there was many difficult challenges in the case. Well, specifically in this case, the challenge uh, in the case was overcoming a lot of the defense arguments in terms of the visibility of Mr. Hernandez's vehicle on the roadway and, and the different versions of what happened from the various witnesses. There was, you know, various witnesses that came, you know, upon the scene either before or after the, the collision with the big rig and it was very convoluted in terms of the police report about who saw what and when. And so it was really important in this case that we get a good uh, accident reconstruction and animation of the accident that we could show at a mediation to show the, the mediator and show the defense, frankly, that we knew how this accident happened. And so that visual, you know, is so important in the case to show that animation of exactly how the accident happened. And really in this case, when we were able to establish that not you know, not just uh, Mr. Salazar that saw Mr. Hernandez on the roadway, but other vehicles were able to see him and get around him. And we also established in Mr. Salazar's deposition that, you know, the big rig that hit him was not the first big rig that came upon the scene. And that was not in the first police report either. So showing that visual of another big rig seeing the Hernandez vehicle even though it was dark, even though there was no lights on the vehicle, even though his car was dark, that it was still able to see his vehicle on the roadway and easily pass around it. And having that visual is, you know, they always say, right, a, a, a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, you know, in this case, I think an animation and an illustration of what happened visually is worth a million words. Yeah, with DK Global, it was outstanding. You know, in, in my case, I actually met with the production team out at their Redlands office kind of went through things. You know, we had to go through and sort out a lot of the deposition testimony to see what different witnesses observed. We were looking at, you know, different angles uh, for the visual. And then, you know, of course they produced it. And then we were able to communicate back and forth to make sure that it was exactly 100% correct and accurate and spot on. And then we had it reviewed by our, our engineers uh, accident reconstruction team as well who approved it and said it was outstanding. Like I said, the, the injury animations were incredible because we coupled those with testimony from our neuropsychologist that was able to paint the picture of the significance of his injuries. And then when you, when you look at that and show the videos of him both before the accident and after the accident, it really shows the major impact that this has had on his life and frankly the life of his entire family. And at the end of the day, we were able to settle the case for $12.65 million uh, after numerous mediation attempts and, and numerous arguments. I think you know their first offer was maybe $3.5 million and finally we got the case settled for $12.65 million.